Hi guys, welcome to the Under the Covers channel. This is Suzanne and this is a very late wrap up and I'm going to be talking about uh, the books that I read in February. First of all, I need to brag about my hair. You may have noticed that it has changed colour slightly. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'd have seen my whole like thought process. But yeah, what do you think guys? It's real pretty, I really like it. Anyway, so let's move on to something slightly more bookish. So February wasn't a great month for me. So this is probably going to be a fairly short video. I spent quite a lot of February sick once again. Um, I lost my voice completely and was just feeling real rough. Um, but voice is back, so I'm back and I'm going to talk about, I think I read about 10 books in February. Uh, which is a lot less than I really wanted to. I got a bit behind on Romanceopoly as well, which was a shame because I was really far ahead, uh, which means in March I need to very quickly catch up. So first of all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do, you don't want to miss out on any of our amazing content. And now I will dive into the books that I have read in February. First book I read was Alone in the Wild by Kelly Armstrong, which is book five in the Rockton series, which is a thriller mystery with um, like a hint of romance in it. And it is one of my favourite series. I really love it. In this one, um, it focuses a little bit more on the relationship between our two main characters. Um, and things progress. I don't want to give away too much, but things progress. Um, and I think their relationship takes a stride forward as they think about their future. But that did mean that I think the thriller pop plot in this one wasn't quite as exciting or as tense as the other ones. And that is what I've really loved about this series, about like how tense and claustrophobic claustrophobic it is but this one didn't quite have that feel but it was offset a little bit more by um I guess character and relationship development so all in all still really enjoyed this book and I highly recommend giving it a try. Next up I tried my first ever uh Lisa Cole and it was Can't Escape Love which I believe is a novella in the Reluctant Royal series. I haven't read any of the Reluctant Royal series mainly because I have absolutely zero interest in royal romances um i don't know if it's because i live in the uk and like the royal family are everywhere and they always have been and it doesn't seem that romantic to me um but i just like i just have no interest in it i just don't care enough about the monarchy to want to read romances about fictional monarchy um, because i'm not sure if i could suspend my disbelief enough to really get into it anyway this book could be read as a standalone, you don't really need to, well, as far as I could tell, having not read any of that series, this could be re read without reading any of the others. And it was a really nice novella. So we have a heroine with a disability, she is in a wheelchair, um, and a hero who I think is meant to be on the autism spectrum. I am trying to remember because I read this like about... Uh, five weeks ago now um, but it was a really cute sexy romance I very much enjoyed it am I in a massive rush to read more Alyssa Cole maybe I mean it I didn't make me want to didn't make me want to dive into her backlist but I did really enjoy this novella Another new author for me was Simone St James and I read The Sundown Motel which was a like a mystery, um, had a bit of a ghost story. It was a very slow starter. It took a lot of time to get the momentum going in this book, but I really enjoyed it. We had two timelines, one from the 80s and one in present day. Um, so um, our heroine's aunt goes missing in the 80s and in present day, she is basically gone back to where she went missing and to try and find out what's happening. It was, um, it was kind of creepy, but like I said, it took a while to get going, uh, but it was an enjoyable read. I think this is like a good one to read around like Halloween time because it had that ghostly element to it. Next, I dived into so ro some romance properly reads. So for Action Avenue, I read City of Demons by Debbie Cassidy, which is an urban fantasy reverse harem. Um, and obviously I was all over that. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. I really, really enjoyed the first book and I am definitely going to be reading more. It's short, snappy, funny, action-packed. Um, 
it's a reverse harem so in this book we are I think introduced to the potential men of this harem but nothing actually really happens um sorry I've got like a hair in my face and it's really bothering me uh, uh. since I dyed it it's gone like all fluffy sorry right sorry <laughs> back on track to books um yeah so i i really like this it was really funny i really enjoyed it we have a talking dog we have um, a disembodied voice in the basement which has this other factor in this series so we don't know quite what's going on there but i cannot wait to find out it is really good i really enjoyed it it was a fun quick read and i will definitely be diving in to the rest of this series then i read a another romanceopoly book and that was for uh, the office which is to read a romance where the characters meet at their place of work. I chose Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen which is kind of a sports contemporary romance however the characters aren't the sports players they are um, the owner of the team and a person who works for him so it skirted the edges of a sports romance without actually diving fully in and um, I really like Serena Bowen's books they're always like really sexy um, a lot of fun um, some great banter in there and that's exactly what I got with Brooklyn Air it didn't really blow me away but it was an enjoyable way to pass a few hours and I would definitely say to pick it up if you're already a fan or if you want really something really like easy and fun to read then I read Undercover Bromance by Lissa K Adams so I read the first book in this series and absolutely loved it the idea of having um, a, like a bromance book club where guys get together to read romance books to help them understand their own lives and their own romances it just really appealed to me and this is a continuation of this series I liked it I gave it 3.5 but I didn't love it I don't know why it just um I don't know if I'm gonna get like heckled for this but I felt like everyone was too perfect um it didn't just quite ring true to me like the f in the way the first book kind of did um I don't know I just it didn't quite I didn't quite connect with this one as much as I did the first one I mean it had its funny moments and stuff but in general I just didn't like this one as much as the first one and then I read Cross Her Heart by Melinda Lee which is the first in her new series um, called the Brie Taggart series uh, I love Melinda Lee she's an author that I discovered either last year or the year before and she does like um, thrillers mystery romantic suspense all of them have like an element of romance in it um, so this book is a thriller so our heroine's sister gets murdered and she basically goes back to this town where she has some very bad memories to try and solve the case and um look after her sister's two children who she is now left as guardian to um along the way she meets up with a former um detective who also lives on a town and they team together to try and find out what's happened I really enjoyed this book I cannot wait to read more in this series it's bound to be amazing it kind of reminds me of Kendra Elliott's Mercy Kilpatrick series a little bit it has like some very similar elements um so if you enjoyed that you will enjoy this um the romance is is like just at the very beginning in this book there is kind of no sex in it I think they kiss at the end but that's about as much as it gets to but I can feel I feel like in the next book and the book after that's where the romance will really come into its own now for one of my favorite books this month and that's Lord Holt Takes a Bride by Vivian Lorette this this is the first book in the mating habits of scoundrels um and it was so good I really enjoyed this this is my first book by Vivian Lorette although I see her books all the time I've just I don't know why I've just never picked it up and now I'm wondering why that is because I really enjoyed this once I started it I really couldn't put it down it starts with um, our group of heroines accidentally kidnapping our hero uh, with him escaping and then kidnapping our curvy heroine back um, in return I really love this book it had such great chemistry between the hero and heroine there was kind of like an enemies to lovers to friends thing going on um, a little bit of a slow burn I guess but you could feel the chemistry between them right from the 
start. Um, I felt like at the end it lost its way just a slight bit when it was trying to tie things up, but the actual relationship part between the hero and the heroine I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed their time together because they're on a road trip as well. Um, their time together like struggling through on the road with absolutely no money trying to get to their destination. Um, it was just a really fun sexy little read and I am definitely going to be reading more of Vivian Lorette in the future. So next up I read a book that I have seen absolutely everywhere and that is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I think that's how you say her surname. Um, this is the first book in the Curse Breakers series. It's a, a young adult fantasy. I liked it. Um, it's a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast, um, of course, because they're absolutely everywhere. And um, I did like it. Did I love it? No. Can I call? I can see why it's everywhere on Instagram um because it has a beautiful cover, and I bet there's some absolutely beautiful merchandise that could go along with this book. The story itself, it was just okay. I didn't like, I didn't fall in love with it. I didn't really fall in love with the characters, but it was entertaining. Can't quite see the, I just can't quite see why this has captured people's imagination so much. I feel like there's a lot of books like this one around. Like I said, I did like it and it's a beautiful addition to my bookshelf. I would read the next one uh, and I am planning on reading the next one but I'm I'm kind of in no rush I liked it but you know I like a lot of books I, I gave it I think 3.5 stars so those are all the books that I read in February as you can say as you can see they were a bit thin on the ground I haven't really managed to read as much as I would like in February but hey March is now here I've started on my March books maybe I can catch up then let me know what you have read in february what you're planning to read in march have we read any of the same books do you do we have any of the same opinions please let me know in the comments thank you very much for listening don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media we are everywhere and of course you need to check out the blog under the covers bookblog.com Thank you very much for listening, have a fantastic month and I'll see you in the next video.